Well, hello there. This is Mr. Damon, and I am so glad that you and I are friends. That's right. I claim you as a friend because you are awesome. Well, before we get started with our story tonight, run and grab your parent and ask if they want to sit down and listen to tonight's bedtime story with you. Why? Because a party is always much more fun. Well, take a couple of seconds right now and think about something that happened to you today that you didn't like. You got it? Now, think about your favorite part of the day. Do you see that even though difficult things happen each day, there are also great moments that we get to be thankful for. In tonight's story about Jesus, we find him surrounded by another massive group of people hungry to hear about God's love. It's funny because that happened to him a lot. And on this particular day, Jesus told the big crowd of people a story to show them God loves everyone even when we do bad things, even when we act like knuckleheads. Once upon a time, Jesus began, a rich man had two sons. The younger son told his dad, Dad, I know that when you die, you're going to give me half of everything you own. But I don't want to wait until you're dead. I wish you were dead right now because I want my money right now. Whoa, are you kidding me? Talk about ungrateful, huh? Well, as you can imagine, the son's words broke his dad's heart, but the father gave half of his money to the younger ungrateful son anyways. Like we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars. And as soon as the ungrateful son got what he wanted, he jumped on an airplane and flew to a faraway city. Okay, well, airplanes hadn't been invented yet, but you get what I'm saying. And then the younger son spent the money quickly. He threw big, expensive parties. He bought huge, expensive cars, boats, white tigers. You get the picture. In fact, this kid bought everything he wanted, and he did anything he wanted. But pretty soon... All of his money was gone. And the bank swooped in, took back his cars, his boats, his houses, all of his cool stuff, including the tigers. And once his money was gone, and he couldn't pay for big parties anymore, all of his so-called friends, poof, disappeared too. Because they were never real friends. They were just using him for his cool things. And now, the younger son was broke and all alone. And after a while of not eating food, he began to starve. I've got to find something to eat, he thought. But the only job that he could find was working for a pig farmer. And his job was to feed garbage to pigs all day long. It was horrible and filthy. He was cold, starving. And if that wasn't bad enough, he was constantly covered in pig poop. What am I doing here? The boy thought one day. I should go home. There's no way that my dad still loves me after how mean I was to him, but maybe he'll let me work for him as a servant instead. So he got up left the pig pen, and started the long, cold walk back home. And after days and days, he got near to his house. And when the boy came close to the house, he started thinking about what he was going to stay, say to his dad to keep him from being too mad at him. Have you ever, like, knew you were going to get in trouble 
and then came up with an explanation for why you made the bad choice you did, hoping that it would keep your parents from getting too angry at you? <laughs> Let me tell you, I have. We all have. Well, so did the son. But what the dirty, stinky son didn't realize is every day since the day he had left, his dad stood at the front window looking down the road, hoping and praying that his son would come home. And even though the son had done horrible stuff to him, none of it could stop the father from loving his child. And when the father saw his defeated, broken son trudging up the road, he threw open the door and ran out as fast as he could to meet him. He was so happy to see his son that he started to cry. They hugged each other for a long time. I'm sorry, Dad, the boy said. You're probably so mad at me you don't want me to be in the family anymore. But the dad interrupted his son and shouted, You'll always be my boy, and I will always love you, even when you do bad things. Welcome home. Have you ever disobeyed your mom or your dad or your grandma or grandpa? I disobeyed my parents so many times. I remember doing things I knew I wasn't supposed to do. I was acting like a knucklehead. Of course, it made my parents sad, and it made me sad too. But they never stopped loving me. They forgave me. In the exact same way that your mom or dad, your parents will never stop loving you. Do you know it's the same with Jesus? When we choose to say yes to Jesus, and we do what we know is right, we get to enjoy peace and joy and a clean conscience. And when we do and say things that we know is wrong, yeah, it hurts us. And it hurts others, including Jesus' heart. But, Here's the great news. It doesn't make Jesus stop loving you. Just like the father in the story never stopped loving his son. You see, Jesus told the crowd and us this story to tell us there is nothing we can do to make him stop loving us. No matter what happens, Jesus is on your side. He is with you, He is taking care of you, and He will always be your best friend. Jesus, just like your best friends at school, loves it when you talk to Him. So let's do this. Let's take a second together and let's talk to Jesus. Why don't you say this after me? Jesus, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for loving me no matter what I do. I know there is nothing I could do to make you stop loving me. Help me to know deep in my heart that your love will never change. Amen. It was a good day today. And guess what? Tomorrow is going to be even better. And remember this. You are important, brilliant, and so valuable to your friends, to your family, to me, and most importantly, to Jesus. Jesus.